everyone, welcome back to some more Fort Smith Sport 4. Today we're continuing with Let's Play. This is episode 75. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the RX7 yeah. Club. For that, we need an RX7. And the RX7 we are using today is going to be the 1985 Mazda RX7 GSLSE. Oh, AKA the loudest car in this boy. game. Because holy shit, this thing's loud. Mm. Because it doesn't stop screaming. Yeah. It's like Corey Taylor. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, just for um, body kit. For those who are not uh, familiar with this car, uh, ooh, I like yeah. the wing. Bell Ray actually did a versus the community, <laughs> and someone actually had this car. They did a race around Sakuba, and the only thing you could hear over Alex's voice. Was this very car? Nice. It screamed. So where you were on the track, it screamed. And it doesn't stop screaming. <laughs> uh, we won't need weight reduction. We will need a gearbox. We'll probably need a differential. We'll get that. We'll get the rotary upgrade. We'll get the intake manifold. The rotaries have intake manifolds. I think so. Also, it makes torque. Yay. Ooh, Let's go. Not bad. Also, it's a, this is a naturally aspirated rotary in its current form. Mm. Ooh. Uh, where is it? No, wait, is that it? Yeah. RX-7 called multiple generations of Mazda's iconic rotary sports car take the spotlight. Suzuki E-Circuit. Fun fact, by the way. Mm. It says Club RX-7. Mm. You can use an RX-8 for this. Oh. Makes you wonder why they didn't just call it Club Rotary. However, there is a very good reason for that. Mm. Because they also have a Mazda Rotary Showcase. Oh, okay. Work at that one out. Yeah, that doesn't really make any sense, does it? No. No. Did you know who it does make sense to? Hmm. Turn 10. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Do you know why it makes sense of them? Did, did you just have a stroke? <laughs> That's why it made sense. Mm. I'm a double cammy jammy. Let's go. What I need to destroy. Yeah. Loudness. The long gear ratio probably isn't helping this one. Also, in case you're wondering why we're not using an FDRX7, it's because I used one in Forza 4, and also there's another big issue with that. Hmm. The other FD in this game is a unicorn car. Oh. Yay. Because you Thanks can't use. Dance. Yeah, the Spirit R is a unicorn car, so that's fun. And then for whatever reason, until Forza Horizon 4, uh, they dropped the Spirit R altogether. Hmm. Horizon 4 until when I it gave was it a DLC an car. LS. I came to a DLC car and I gave it an LS and put a Dylan Hart livery on it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it came with that DLC along with the Sentra, I think. Which, for those of you who don't know, the Sentra is not sold in the UK. Or Europe. Is Japan or, exclusive? Or anywhere outside of America, apart from, I think, maybe Dubai. Hmm. Because the Middle East has the same sort of car quality as the Americans do for some reason. Yeah, it's fantastic. Turns out when you dominate by someone, you really like their cars, daddy. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, well, I was watching that 24-hour uh, Dubai race before it got completely cancelled because of all the fucking <clears throat> rain. And um, it was weird. I, I, I see so many weird cars there. I'm like, hey, I recognize that. Hey, I recognize that. Like, um, there was some dude with, like, a 2015 Honda Accord there. There was, like, a Chevy Sonic sedan. It was weird. Yeah, they usually have, like, random fucking cars there. Yeah. The best one's Russia. 
Yeah, they get because you get a mixture of Lada's European cars, and then they build stuff like Escalades and Yukons mm -hmm. in Russia as well. <laughs> and then you get the twin. Then you get fucking random fucking Citroen two CV racing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that was the Citroen DS3, remember? Yeah, yeah, do you not remember that race crash they had where like everyone crashed at like that third corner or whatever it was? Oh. It was like the DS3 club or something like that. Was it like a was it like a rally cross thing? I it might have been. Oh no! Okay. Ooh. Well, that wasn't expected. Oh god! <laughs> oh, oh, that's what you. Oh, that's not good. Oh, hmm. I was you would flip over. How do you flip a? Oh, I, I... there we go. I didn't think it was that. Good a car to flip, I'll be honest, but there you go. Okay, I'm taking a look at it right now. This is the oh first my over, it? It's one of the first out. I think something else might have fallen over, but it might be the first oh. one. How does that happen? I don't know, but it was a really pathetic roll, I know that much. Yeah, it was sad. It shot flames before it rolled, though, so that's cool. I don't know how oh. you roll a car of Suzuka. The curves aren't even that bad. No, they're not. Holy Is this the first car to fall over? I feel like something else might have fallen over. I know it's... Uh, falling over hasn't Whoa. been quite as prevalent as it was in Forza 3. Where we had, like, it took ages for a car to fall over and then we had the episode with the ML63 where it fell over 18 times. <laughs> the Aveo oh, fell LS over Aveo. quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, but that's just because putting an LS engine in an Aveo is a really stupid idea. That's why we did it. That is exactly why we did it. Unfortunately, you cannot put like cooler engine in a Chevy Sonic, otherwise we would have sent that to space already. You can put a Cobalt turbo engine in it, though, so I guess that's what. <laughs> I guess I've got that's a actually pretty good engine as well. Oh, the Cobalt. That's, that's a car that I should come back to. Which Cobalt, though? Because Forza 3 and Forza 4 had different Cobalts. Well, I guess Forza 3 had the supercharged one, then. Yeah, yep. Forza 3 had the supercharged 05, and this game has the turbocharged 2010 one. For reasons. Although, I managed to fuck up the supercharged one. In Forza 3 by putting a turbo in it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, good job. How did it handle? Do you brake late or early for a fast turn after a straight? Um, probably early, because I'm usually quite a scaredy cat when it comes to driving, so... Here, here, here's an idea. Mm hmm Uh... Tsukuba short. Put... Put a, uh... Put... Put the supercharged one in, and when you put, if you put a turbo on it, it makes the same power as the turbo. I don't know if you could supercharge the turbo version, but I'll give it a go. You got a friend in me. You Why did you put that body kit on this thing? Me. What? Why did you put the body kit on it? Do you not like the body kit? Hmm. It looks alright. It's extreme but... dimensions, yo. I'm not feeling the blue. I like the blue! What colour would you have it in? Red. It doesn't come in red. Hmm. There's actually an RX-7 a lot like this around where I live, and it comes in poo brown. I think brown was an option. Yep. Orange was the lead colour for this car. Yeah. And then there was a few blues, a black and a white, and probably a brown. Yeah. Have you ever seen one of these in person? Uh, No. 
Ah, uh, yeah. I have. They're really tiny. Like, Miata tiny. It's insane how small they are. I won an insurance quote on one of these once. Really? Yeah. No, computer said forty-four pounds a month. Whoa. Uh, because this is RX Seven Club, but RX Eights are more than welcome. I explained at the start. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. Turn Ten's divine wisdom dictates it. Again, to point out for the record, there is RX Seven Club and also Mazda Rotary Showcase. Work that one out. Hmm. I don't know if you can actually rotary swap anything. Uh, I mean, if you protege, can, then... I know you can. The what? The protege. I've already used that. Then. Okay. Well, you could if you want. I put a retarded body. Kit. I put the worst body kit I've ever seen on a car on it, so mm -hmm. it got a fate worse than death. Pacer. In this game. Yeah, pacer's in full. Even nothing of the Javelin engine, because the only way it worked in this game is it was only manufacturer based. Yeah. So, for example, this car, like the biggest engine it can have, is either a Fuel I or the uh, the Spirit R or X7 engine. <sighs> it can't have like an LS or anything like that. Well, Are you sure this game has the Pacer in it? Yeah, I'm 100% certain this game has the Pacer. Yeah, it has a Pacer and a Gremlin. I'm pretty sure it came with this. Pacer, pack. Gremlin, Javelin. Huh. Pacer and Gremlin came in the DLC together, pretty sure. Yes, mm. and the Javelin, okay. Javelin was DLC for 43, I think. Listen to the sound of the road tree, brah! Yeah, it's pretty loud. It is pretty loud. <laughs> I always wanted to my washing machine go up to a thousand RPM. <laughs> Who doesn't? Oh, sweet, I love washing machines. Sweet home out washing machine. Lord, I'm washing my clothes in you. This is a weird looking dirt bike. What? He's joking about the sound of it. Because dirt bikes sound like that. They just go brap, 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 like that. Don't dirt bikes like have CVTs mostly? Um, I don't think they do. I know ATVs usually have uh, CVT transmissions, but I don't know about dirt bikes, to be honest. I, I think they have like five and six speeds usually. Uh. I've never ridden one. I've only ridden an ATV, no no dirt bikes. Scotian, you've ridden an ATV. Yeah. No, they have CVT. What? Does a dirt bike have C? Uh, does a quad bike have CVT? Yes. Yeah. Wow. You trying to say you drive an automatic? Wow. Bro, you're uh, supposed to like free pedals till you die. What is this? There's pretty much. There's like only like three ways you can. I'm joking, by the way. Or two ways to go on an ATV nowadays. Gone. It's either. Tiptronic or CVT, and I think Tiptronic is fucking going out the door. Well, I mean, I thought all bikes would be CVT, so... No. Oh, Emil, you have, I think, a Russian viewer. I can't read their name, so... I, I can't read it either. Hello! Well, I can't read your name, I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's Cyrillic, I know that, but... Make to see us. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let me run it through a translator. If that'll even work. His name is Ivan. Oh, that doesn't work. We need a Russian fucking uh, server, so... Yes. Oh, this might not be correct, but it looks like Google says his name is Alexei Alexiev. Alright. Alexei would make him feel like he's a Russian name. Yep. Yeah. I remember that because I remember being called Alexi in Modern Warfare 2 right before I shot the Russian airport to shreds. <laughs> Remember oh, no Russian. 
Do you ever, did you uh, ever try to kill Makarov in that? Uh, no. No. I did. I like Makarov. He gave me money. No, I, um, yeah, of course you do. <laughs> I'm short. I, I, I really sympathize with a man that wants to bomb London. Mm. No, I'm joking. Uh, good thing that's recorded. Good thing it isn't. Do you break late <laughs> or early for a fast uphill after a straight? Example, no boogering. Just trying to think. For, for fast uphill. Not really. The only one I think I break for on Nürburgring is the drop. Because there's like one corner where like it's towards the back end of the track. There's like a corner where essentially there's a jump and then it's an immediate right hook. I oh, will yeah, break. I know what you're talking about. I will break for yep. that in a faster car because if you don't, in Forza traditionally it'll just break the aero on the car. Which means you oh, can't yeah, go around that... corners, or you just won't yeah. go around the corner. <laughs> yeah. That was a problem in Forza 3, wasn't it? That was a thing we found out, yes. In For I don't think in GT4 you had to break for it, because I don't think the downhill was as quick. Or as sudden. Mm. I have mm. some news. Ooh. Ooh. What's in the news? The Vagabond Falcon has hit... 77,777.7 miles. Mm. I thought that engine had like 75,000 miles on it before they put it in. While, while going 70 miles on it. I'm surprised. They don't speak about that car at all, do they? So. He did an update on it. Did he? He said it's, mm. he said it's cold out, so the engine's not overheating anymore. <laughs> yeah, fix the radiator. And then he shilled some. Uh, cleaning product. Oh, yes, I remember that. Mm. I'm still pissed off that I haven't actually reviewed the Forester yet. What Forester? His Forester. Oh, he owns a Forester now? Yeah, yeah. he got rid of the fit for the Forester, or was it... Was yeah, the fit, the fit was for the Forester because he needed the Forester for winter or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then oh, the what Forester... Year is it? 2004. Oh. 2004 manual Forester, not a turbo. Mm, alright. It had a rust issue. He made a video on it, and then literally everyone that looked at it straight afterwards was like, that's not even an issue. <laughs> like, Bruce Hen looked at it, and it's like, well, the front suspension's bad, but apparently that wasn't done under, that needed a recall anyway. And, like, the actual, like, there was another bit of rust in, like, the coil thing, but that apparently wasn't even an issue. Like, it was only just starting to rust. Bless. But yeah, no, he... Yeah, he's had Forrester for, like, years. Oh, <laughs> I haven't even noticed. Apparently he can't replace it. <laughs> Why? Because nothing will do what he needs it to in a camera car. Because apparently it has like metal like sh hooks in the chassis or something. Which are mm. good for mounting tripods on. Oh, okay. And like, oh, I... every other car he's been around, he hasn't, like, they haven't had it. Like, Outbacks and stuff don't have that apparently. Because okay. apparently he likes oh. the Subaru lifestyle, so. Mm. Well, I know the rear hatch on some of the older Foresters has like a, like a giant metal grab handle on it. That might be it. Yeah, those things are cool. Apparently it's something to do with like the boot floor, there's like four metal like tow hooks or something back there. Mm. They're actually like welded directly into the chassis or something. Oh, alright. Which apparently makes them a good camera. Road America Road 1, do I break late or early? Well, ideally I like to break really late for turn 1, but... Either I stop paying attention and go straight to a wall, or I... I mean, ideally you want to break late. <sighs> you want to break late as possible and just use momentum to swing the car into the corner. But... It doesn't always work like that. Trem I think I took it super late for the... 
hot lap challenge they had in Forza 7, which is my only real, my massive hot lapping experience with Road America. All I know is I hate that track. <laughs> did you ever, um, take, did the ETCC ever go there? Nope. No. ETCC went to tracks I like. Mm. Which is why the track selection was so weird. Much As you know, I tell like, we did Nürburgring GP and I don't like that course, so. No. Oh, you don't? No. No. Is it the first turn? No, it's just boring. <laughs> oh, okay. We did Silverstone as well, but that was also boring. Yeah, and yeah, Silverstone oh, that, that, boring. That uh, that one did give us the Jimmy line, so that's something. Oh yeah. I like when AK went straight on at um, Abu Dhabi. Oh yeah, because I'm the only person in the world that likes Jess Marino apparently. Yeah, I, well, 180. 360. Nice. It's fine. I save it a bit. Yeah, I don't find Yas Marina very fun to drive around. It's just What's a bit What's with Yas Marina? It's ace. It's it, mm, got a hotel that weird. looks like a dick. It's not a reason to like a track, Emil. More because valid than phallic bugs. objects. Oh, God. Oh, it flipped. It did flip. Oh. I think Master might the have AI the highest Anyways, that's it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Next time, we're going to be taking a look at the Evo Club. Join us for that. Until then, farewell. You